Well, greetings out there on YouTube land and welcome to our part three video uh, in the Mystery Amp series. In this uh, particular episode, we're going to design and construct an aluminum chassis for our amplifier cabinet. Our chassis is going to consist of a horizontal top plate, which is typical of all chassis, but this one's going to have little ears on either side that allow it to slide in and out of the cabinet. Then we're going to attach a faceplate here, which will be our control panel. Since I now know exactly where the speaker will be positioned relative to the amp chassis, after I cut out this top plate, uh, I can then uh, set out my transformers and tubes on it and come up with a really nice layout that will not uh, obstruct the speaker and uh, will have plenty of airspace uh, for ventilation. So step one, and this is the worst of all the steps when it comes to aluminum chassis, is I'm going to cut out this top panel from a sheet of 1 8 inch aluminum. Here's the aluminum sheet. As you can see, it's about 1 8 inch in thickness. Nothing special. I got it from some uh, metal yard. It's a scrap. I was going to use it to make the dashboard for the Model A truck, but uh, I used a different material instead. So we're going to mark out the precise measurements here uh, for our top plate of our chassis. Now there are several ways to cut this out. I'm going to use a cutoff wheel. I'll demonstrate that in just a few minutes. I got accustomed to using such a wheel when I uh, fabricated the frame and chassis and all for the Model A that you saw in the last a video. Um, you can also use a saber saw or you can ask the people that you buy the metal from if they have a cutter, generally they do, where they can just cut this piece out for you very precisely and easily. Now using ramps that I built uh, so that I could elevate my cars up about two and a half feet off the ground to work under them, I've securely clamped the uh, aluminum plate and I have just a little bit of clearance between the ramp and my first cutting line. Okay, here we go. Yes, the cutoff saw is probably not for everyone. It's noisy and a little scary and takes some practice to be good with, but you can't argue with the results. The cuts are absolutely perfect, just about as good as if it had been done at the metal shop. And it slides very nicely into the grooves in the sides of our amp cabinet. This now will be the upper surface of our amp chassis. Next, we have to make the measurements for the vertical control panel. Now, bear in mind, it's going to go from inside to inside, and that distance will be diminished somewhat by the fact that material will wrap around here. So we'll deduct a little bit from our measurement to compensate for that. Looks like about 13 and 3 sixteenths by 2 and 3 quarters ought to fit pretty well and leave room for the material. Okay, I've marked my cutoff lines and now time to go outside and cut this piece out. And there, as if by magic, are the two plates that we need for our sliding chassis. No matter what method you use, if you cut the, the metal at home, be sure to wear proper eye protection and protect your hands because uh, cutoff saws and uh, saber saws get a little hot. Now you're probably wondering, uh, this is all fine and dandy, but how do I connect these two pieces? Unless you have a TIG welder of some sort, welding aluminum is not easy. Uh, let's figure out a mechanical way to combine them. And the answer is really quite simple. We're going to use a piece of 3 quarter inch right angle aluminum. We cut it in length to be exactly the same width as our narrower uh, control panel piece. And then squaring it with the face of the top plate we clamp it down with we'll C. Now with the angle piece securely clamped at either end, uh, divide its length into even segments and mark uh, little X's. We're going then to use a punch and then drill through each of those intersections. Now select a bit uh, that's proper for the diameter of the screws or rivets that you're going to use and drill 
holes where you have punched into the aluminum surface. Now since I'm using taper headed uh, screws I am uh, using a countersinking tool here so that the heads of the screws will be flush with the surface. Now with the right angle securely attached to our amplifier top plate with screws and nuts we're ready to continue the process to attach the front panel. Now if you do choose to use rivets, and it's not bad because you can get that kind of steampunk look, um, the problem with rivets is they're pretty much irreversible. I kind of like the screws and nuts because then I can take this apart at any time. I'm going to separate the two pieces when I machine the plates because it's a whole lot easier, easier to machine a two-dimensional piece of metal than a three-dimensional piece. So uh, it's going to be machined separately and then reassembled like this. So if you're going to rivet it, don't rivet it until after you've machined both. So later I'll show you how to secure it with a screw here on either side. But let's face it, when it comes time to pull this out and work on it, if we ever have to, it's going to be a whole lot easier to do that than it is to go up here in the roof and undo four screws and then try to uh, balance and hold the uh, amplifier chassis in one hand while we try and find that uh, screwdriver that we misplaced. Okay, it can't get simpler than this. Now, for those of you who need uh, two vertical walls, just simply repeat this process back here. Now it's time to install the speaker so that we can have it in place and then do a layout on our transformers and tubes down here on our chassis. Okay, I've set the speaker in place and now it's time to drill uh, four holes so that it can be mounted in the bath. The speaker is now installed in the cabinet and you notice I got the wing nuts here. It makes removing the baffle a whole lot easier. Now let's slide in the chassis and start to lay out uh, our uh, different components. Okay, uh, here's the layout I think I'll go with. Uh, I have all the vertical room in the world here, thank heavens, between the tubes and the speaker magnet. Put the uh, power transformer way over here on the side and the rectifier right near it. I'll put transformer up in the front uh, near the speaker. That's the speaker jack. This will probably be the phase inverter. Uh, these will be the uh, 6v6s and back here will be the triode and the pentode. To avoid being too crowded up here on top of the chassis, I'm going to put the filter choke underneath, probably back here. In Before we continue, let's stop for a second to discuss the relative merits of steel versus aluminum uh, when used for amplifier chassis. First, let's start off with the steel. Uh, it's much easier to bend if you use the proper gauge, which is like 18 uh, to 20. Um, it is easy to solder to, so you can solder your ground lugs to it for best connection. Uh, and also, it's really good at shielding against electromagnetic fields. On the downside, it's heavy, it rusts, and it's harder to machine. Aluminum, on the other hand, is much lighter. Uh, it's much easier to drill and machine. And it conducts electricity better than steel. So it uh, forms uh, a good uh, portion of the circuit in the amp uh, with good and provides good conduction. On the downside, it's very difficult to bend, especially sharply, without a great deal of heat. You almost always end up with fractures. Uh, you can't solder to it. So you have to bolt on your ground lugs. Uh, also, it doesn't shield against electromagnetic radiation as well as steel does. However, you can polish it to look a whole lot better than steel, and it won't rust. Whereas the steel over time is going to show fingerprints, and if it's exposed to moisture, it will start to rust. Well, here's the top chassis plate all machined for six tube uh, sockets, the output transformer, speaker jack, and power transformer. Uh, the layout is such that the axis of the power transformer is 90 degrees from the axis of the output transformer. The preamp tube will be as far away as possible 
from the power supply and uh, also I had to cut off at the rear here I cut off about 5 eighths of an inch from the rear of this plate so that instead of being flush with the rear of the cabinet which would mean that the controls would all be protruding out from the rear of the cabinet and vulnerable to damage now it slides in far enough where all of the controls will be recessed into the cabinet and the filter choke will reside under the chassis plate right behind the power transformer. Now it's time to clean up the plate and uh, polish it up a bit so it looks nice and prepare to start installing all of the components. Now with some really fine wet or dry sandpaper, probably around 600 to 1000 grit and some uh, 4 aught steel wool, we polished up the surface so it looks really nice. It has that kind of brushed aluminum look a nice dull sheen. Now let's lay out the control panel. Uh, this is the way I envision it. Uh, triode input, triode volume. Pentode input, pentode volume. I'm keeping them separate because if the pentode has a lot more volume uh, then you can set it down a little bit and the triode up a little bit so that if you care to plug back and forth you won't just either get blasted out or not be able to hear it overall tone control, pilot light, on off toggle switch, 2 amp fuse, and down here the grommet for the power cord. Well I don't hear any complaints so I guess I'll go ahead and start drilling all the holes for these components in the control panel. Well here's the control panel with all of the different components installed and ready to be connected to the top plate and then wired. Well it looks like the chassis is completely assembled. The uh, tube sockets have been riveted in place. There's the speaker output jack, uh, output transformer, power transformer. Um, our control panel is all assembled and attached to the front. Now let's take a look underneath. Okay here's the underside with all the tube sockets um, and our control panel with the triode input, volume control, pentode input, volume control, overall tone control, pilot light, on off toggle, and uh, fuse. That big bundle of wires from our power transformer and here is our filter choke lurking underneath the panel. Okay so I guess it's time to flip it over and slide it into the cab. Here's the chassis quite happily nestling in its cabinet it slides in now about three quarters of an inch further so all of the controls are within the confines of the cabinet and therefore protected uh, to some degree. Um, so well, that's about it I guess for this uh, part three video. We have constructed an aluminum chassis. We have machined it, installed all of our components, slid it into our cabinet and now it's time to wire this beast. So stay tuned for part four in which uh, we will uh, connect all the wires and well it appears that our work here is done for the day so let's go take a look at a really nice old 1957 Chevrolet truck. Well first on our old truck cavalcade will be this 1957 Chevrolet short bed stepside truck. Here's the interior. It has the original, very uh, characteristic uh, Chevrolet dash module. I had to do a bunch of work on the steel part of the dash over here because the radio uh, area had been hacked up to put in a modern radio, which is typical. Uh, put in a larger aftermarket wheel to give me some leverage to steer this beast because it has no power steering. Nice indoor-outdoor carpeting from Lowe's and pretty nice upholstery really even a headliner okay let's do a quick walk around as you'll notice the body's virtually perfect there was no trace of rust and I had to do some minor body work I installed 16 inch uh, rims and new radial tires and uh, on the tailgate put in the Chevrolet in white lettering and then built a custom bumper at the rear that includes these uh, boat trailer taillights. They're diode 
a light, so they draw almost no current. They're submergible in water and virtually indestructible. And if anything does happen to them, you just go to Harbor Freight and get another pair for about uh, 10 or $12. Okay, here's the passenger side, much the same. We'll come around to the front end. Now this was the standard model, not the deluxe. So uh, it has the white painted grill and bumper. Uh, and the very characteristic 1957 Chevrolet uh, ridges on the hood. Remember in the car they had like little machine gun barrels at the end here, but on the truck they just stay. Now for many people uh, this would be the best part. Under the hood a crate 350 Chevrolet engine with small tube headers, aluminum high-rise manifold, Edelbrock 600 a CFM carburetor, a four barrel air cleaner, and a new Champion aluminum radiator. Transmission is a TH400 Chevrolet with a low car shifter. I even sprung for an Optima battery. They cost about twice as much as regular batteries and they last about three times as long. If you're curious if it runs as good as it looks, uh, it's actually a little better than that. With 411 gears uh, and this engine, uh, this thing can definitely get out of its own way. Not much can keep up with you at the stoplight if you decide that you don't want them to. Okay, I started it up. Engine's nice and quiet. When we move around to the rear though and listen to the exhaust note, it definitely sounds healthy. So that's it for the 57 Chevy truck. The new owner is picking it up today, so I thought I'd get some video before I turned it loose, and I thought that you might enjoy seeing it.